work permits for foreigners are supposed to be given for work which no Kenyan can do. When a fellow Chinese who cannot speak English is manning a gate and Kenyans are looking for jobs, what are you talking about, you fellows? Let's get to the bottom of this matter quickly. Lastly, can we afford a million shillings a day? What are you saying? These people are like, this thing is going to become like the port of, of Sierra, Sierra Leone and Sri Lanka. We are going to sell our national treasure to these people. 66% of our debt and is growing is to the Chinese. If you don't wake up and smell the coffee, senators, and Sir Kasakaja, I thank you for bringing this up. This is going to be something. They have given me problems. Senator Senator was telling me about Imali Primary School. They split a school into two. The railway line is in the middle. The school is destroyed. They have, they have refused to repair it. When they go to Makweni, when we complain, they go and bribe the teachers, give them 200,000, 300,000. We have a crisis. Sultan Amud had a flood recently. Why? Because of the standard gauge railway. That's the first time we had a flood there. They've blocked all coverts because of raising the railway. Let's get to the bottom of this matter. Or oh, history is going to judge us so harshly when we begin paying and selling our country to the Chinese when we gave them the port of Mombasa, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, and part of Kenya, which we will give to the Chinese. I call it the road to Shanghai. Thank you. What sort of country allows such moral decadence to the level where you have lowered the threshold of sexual intercourse to 10-year-olds and 80-year-olds and it becomes business as usual? But as Senator Ndwiga says, what responsibility have we taken? In my case, Mr. Speaker, let me tell you, I have a relative who I got into life imprisonment for impregnating a standard six school child in my village. In the last one year, we have not had a case of uh, any person looking at a schoolgirl. Just looking. <laughs> but I have instances, like that particular instance, I discovered the chief, the OCS, the family were negotiating, land had been sold, they had agreed to pay 200000 I am watching brief in a case in Machakos. They are offering now to marry the child. So that, so that they can deal with the question of defilement. Police stations, my dear senators, have turned, become shops where policemen are doing cases on rape and defilement. They determine, and the quantum is 200,000, you pay, forget about it, parents are making money out of this. Parents are equally to blame. How does a child become pregnant, first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, when the stomach is this big, and then we start making noise. Teachers, I have refused in my law firm to represent anybody who commits incest, sleeps with a child. I don't represent them, and neither does any lawyer in my firm represent such characters. While we talk about girls, they are boys who have been sodomized. I've gotten somebody arrested for sodomizing nine boys in Mboni constituency. Mr. Speaker, let's take action. Let's deal, start with ourselves. What have you done as a leader to ensure that you do not have this in your village? Any person, whether it's your relative, your brother, send them to jail. That is the only way they will learn the lessons. It's not enough, Mr. Speaker, to stand here and, and pontificate and make so much noise because these things are happening in your villages. If it's 40% in Narok, 33 in Homer Bay, chances are out of the 40%, one of those people is your relative. The person who delivered the sugar to Kenya is known. The person who imported this sugar is known. The person who put a sticker to approve that this sugar was safe for consumption, Mr. Speaker, is known. The cartels from the statements that have been made in the public domain, Mr. Speaker, are also known. Mr. Speaker, I'm afraid that I, I do not agree with the statement made that Parliament should investigate this matter because I believe Parliament is also accused. How can we know sugar barons and we are threatening to table names instead of tabling those names? It's an embarrassment, Mr. Speaker. 
I personally call upon the president and a cup one or two. Mr. President, this is the time to form a commission of inquiry to interrogate your government because it is your government that is responsible. The people who have authorized this thing are sitting in government. Cartels the same. This is the only way to get the truth. When we wanted to deal with Goldenberg, because Goldenberg was called the house of cards, let me tell you, this sugar is like a house of cards for the Jubilee government. Let me tell you. You have made Kenyans consume mercury. In fact, when you think about mercury, I would rather it, ha it was dust. I would rather if it was mud. If you put mercury in water, it reacts violently. Now imagine that in the stomachs of Kenyans, young people, children, and we are threatening to table names. Shame on you, leaders. Mr. President, let's deal with this issue now and for all, Mr. Speaker. Parliament is not capable of any investigation. We can't investigate ourselves. We have been unable to investigate ourselves for the last several years, Mr. Speaker. Let the truth be told. But lastly, Mr. Speaker, this is one country. Sometimes I, I don't agree with the word third world, but we live in the third world. And we behave like we're in the third world. Because in the, where people matter, the book by the gentleman called Steve Hilton, where the people matter, the minister in charge should have resigned by now. In charge of immigration, in charge of agriculture, they should have resigned, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I will not speak as angrily as Senator Malala, but Mr. Speaker, I want to say this, that the president must get read, read, read means bump them off of people who are destroying this country. This country is a peace-loving country. We, we are so innocent, but these cartels, these cartels, and trust me, Senator Haji, these are very few people. They are not many. Very few people who are making illegal profits. There's a statement that was made here, and I, the one who responded to it on, a, on a, the question was asked by a senator here in the last time about counterfeit Samsung phones. And from that statement, we asked the then Chief Justice Mutunga to set up a counterfeit court like happens all over the world. These sugar barons, just like the NYS scandal, uh, uh, culprits will be taken to court. They will be slapped with a 10,000 fee, which they can pay by m -Pesa, which they will pay, or come with checkbooks. Mr. Speaker, and in, in developed countries, you cannot make a profit in this manner. We call this in law you serious profit made from illegality. Tougher action would be taken. A counterfeit court so that that person has to migrate to go to another place. If we could exile Miguna for nothing, we should exile sugar barons and send them to some place, a country that has no name. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we will not proceed today unless we have those three senators. If we have to sit on this table, we will sit on it. Because, Mr. Speaker, I am in this Senate. Mr. Speaker, I was elected in this Senate because one person who was a member of this Senate was found dead on his bed. Senator Mutula Kilonzo, my dad. And if it's not Malala, and if it's not Lelegwe, it's going to be me or you. The former President Moy may his soul rest in peace as the President of the Republic allowed Senator Orengo to tell him on his face that he was misleading the country. We must tell the President Uhuru Kenyatta that we will not allow. This sort of thing cannot happen in Kenya. In 2020, Mr. Speaker, we are calling upon you to adjourn this house. Tell the IG we need the senators here. Unless those senators have committed treason, which is not bailable. Mr. Speaker, those senators should be here to conduct their business. I have represented Senator Haniri. 
Yes, I, have, I represented Senator Haniri when he was an assistant minister. When I was a young man, he was released on his own personal cognizance as an assistant minister. Even if there was an offense committed, those gentlemen can come here and we will represent them in court. But if my good friend and the person who calls me my father, Senator Orengo, who is here, and for Gisio, who allowed this special sitting, is going to allow this, this sort of thing to continue. Mr. Speaker, there is no reason why we are a legislature. We should call ourselves members of county assemblies. It is extremely upsetting, Mr. Speaker, that senators have to hide. People have to switch off their phones so that you are not traced by the police. When did this become a police state? When Senator of Nairobi, Sakaja, we raised a concern here. I know Senator Kangata had an issue about what happened to him. But this is exactly what we were saying. That when one member of this house is in trouble, Mr. Speaker, it doesn't matter what agenda it is. It doesn't matter who is winning. What matters, Mr. Speaker, is that we are together in this house to do the business of this country. Nobody is doing his personal business here. Mr. Speaker, I second this, this motion that we adjourn this business until we get confirmation. Mr. Speaker, who knows? While we are conducting this business, what is happening to Senator Lelegwe? He could be found in Gong Forest. They could inject him with something and kill him slowly. I have seen the pain of death. I have smelt death. I have seen what happens when somebody gives you poison. You bleed and bleed so much, like my father did. May, may not happen to another person because we are not conducting personal business of any person. Uh, Mr. Speaker, what is happening in Nairobi, particularly the evictions, is, is a violation of human rights. What is happening in, uh, in Nairobi in the middle of a pandemic is actually an international crime. Yeah. It's an international crime yes. because those people are staying out in the cold. Those people are mixing with people who they don't know whether they're infected. Mr. Speaker, something is wrong with this government. God needs to find something about this government. There is something wrong about the way they treat uh, human beings. As if this government was elected by cows and goats. Mr. Speaker, we proceeded to inquire by virtue of our training and by virtue of the law, the reasons for the arrest of Senator Malala. There was no warrant of arrest. The officers said, call the DCI. We have just been given instructions. Mr. Speaker, on further inquiry as to the circumstances that would lead to the suspicion, the arrest of Senator Malala, would you believe it, Speaker? The person in charge told us that Senator Malala is accused of having distributed Government of Kenya sanitizers in Mumias yesterday. And Speaker, I want to look into your eye because I'm addressing you. He was distributing sanitizers in Western province. Yesterday, in Mumias in particular, yesterday, Senator Kasanga was in the, in the press. Our own Senator talking about COVID millionaires, people who have stolen masks, sanitizers to go and sell. Senator Malala was distributing sanitizers to widows. They misled us. Mr. Speaker, and this, this is very challenging. Because as lawyers, myself, including uh, Senator Omogeni, should not have let Senator Malala off. But we were told there's mischief in, in this chamber. So against our oath as lawyers, Mr. Speaker, we have come to address you. Against our oath, we have, left, we have let Senator Malala, who was supposed to go to Nairobi, uh, province, Nairobi area, is now on his way to Mumias. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it is you, and I'm looking at you. It is you, Mr. Speaker, who has been defied. 
And Mr. Speaker, if you cannot sit on that seat, this will be a good time to resign. I can sit there. <laughs> because this is a chamber of parliament. It is to an extent, Mr. Speaker, you have such powers that if there was a vacancy in the executive, Mr. Speaker, you could, you could be a president. And for even a rumor, Mr. Speaker, that you're under pressure. I hear you're under pressure. Pressure from who? Did God call you? Did you speak to God this afternoon, Mr. Speaker? It's who good, is pressurizing it's, it's, it's you? It's good you said it's a rumor. Yes. Because I'm, I'm not under any pressure. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, if you are not under any pressure, and nobody has called you, Mr. Speaker, this session must end. Now, because if you gazetted a special sitting, Mr. Speaker, and somebody distributed sanitizers, and that is a misdemeanor. It's a misdemeanor to the extent, Mr. Speaker, we would have paid for a bond, would have finished this business, and Senator Malala would have been charged even if they wanted to take him to Somalia or Kakuma. Mr. Speaker, there has never been a day since your election that you are under trial. It's not us. We have done our bit. If you can issue a directive seated in your, cha in your chair, and Mr. Speaker, somebody says he's on leave. Imagine what would happen, Mr. Speaker, if the car that is driving Senator Malala at high speed rolls somewhere in Naivasha. God forbid. Would, would the cabinet secretary be on leave also? The contempt that they are treating us, the contempt they treat people who are elected, Mr. Speaker, tells you, Mr. Speaker, that this country is on the brink. But let me just finish. Because in my anger, I might say something that might lead to things I don't want to say. This is what the 32nd president said. And I'm talking to the powers. Because other than taking my life, you have nothing, no control over me. He said this in 1941. We too, born to freedom, and believing in freedom, are willing to fight and maintain freedom. We, and all others who believe deeply, as we should, would rather die on our feet than live on our knees. We will not live on our knees. If, Mr. Speaker, you even direct we proceed, there will be so much chaos in this floor, Mr. Speaker. There will be no action. You will have to call police to arrest all of us. Because we cannot proceed, Mr. Speaker. It is chilling to think, Mr. Speaker, that we can proceed when our senators are being taken across the country on the highway. Marked graves. In a few days, they will be forgotten. If you read the report of George Kigoro, some people were buried in a hurry. Why? They were in a hurry because they could not contact their relatives. They are buried in the Patel farm. They are forgotten, unmarked graves. That's what you deal with. Uh, that's what happens to people who do not matter. The Bible says, even if you walk in the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Senator Kajuanga said he fears no evil. We walked, the ones who wanted to walk the path and walk the talk through the valley of the shadow of death. We fear no evil because we have conquered in Jesus' name. Kenya National Human Rights Commission, I've seen a report this morning. Coincidentally, I have arrived at the same finding. Same finding that the chief of Solai was compromised to draw three lists and put his friends. This man is still in office. This is a country of Karl Marx. People who are protected because the people who are their lords are not the constitution, but their pockets, their money, and their stomachs. Greed is what got Perry Mansuk to construct Adam like he was God. You know, he attempted to play God. 
and God came down and punished him. I told Perry Mansuk here that as he celebrates his wildlife, his 800 farm, acre farm where wildlife live better than people, the cries of these children who are in primary school when they wake up every morning and look for their fathers and mothers around the house and cannot find their mothers, those cries will be in his house for the rest of his life. That is the Bible. I'm not quoting something that is out of the ordinary. That is what it is. He is cursed, that man, and his wealth. He had better begin donating his land to the people of Solai and giving them food. The worst thing you can do to a human being is deny them food. This dam has denied people food. They cannot farm. They cannot live peacefully. Every time I said, they hear a small bang. They, th they think water is coming down. The circumstances and the environment will never be the same in Solai. Those who say it was five kilometers, it wasn't. This tragedy went 15 kilometers of water at high speed. Sometimes I think that we should have extended this investigation to 15 kilometers to check. Because from the reports I've seen from national government, after the Solai, uh, the, after the Solai trading center, what happened beyond that? You cannot even trust these county commissioners who are busy dishing money as consolation and signing. Daily Mail, London, quoted the story of Kenyan government officials, Kenyan government officials paying money. Cabinet secretary sat here in this beautiful Senate and said they don't read newspapers, they don't, they don't uh, listen to TV, they do not know. That place in the Bible where they say, hear no evil, speak no evil, and say no evil. That is what I saw here. Why would the people get to that? Again, their stomachs, they worship money, just like the Bible, and they will not see any evil. So what is our role? And I finish. There's a parable in the Bible about the person who asked, but Lord, when did you visit me when I was in prison? When did you clothe me when I didn't have clothes? When did you visit me when I was in hospital? That is what the Senate is. The people seated here today do not vote in Akuru, do not live in Akuru, will never ask for a vote in Akuru. But history is going to show that the Senate of this Republic stood for the truth, the downtrodden, Mamamboga, the people who do not matter when it counts except when we are looking for their votes. That is where I put the governor of Nakuru. I told him this is not a national function. This is a people who voted you in. You should have asked the question. You are waiting for the president to tell you to go and look out for the people who voted for you? That you have no report? I don't know. This is where this country has reached. Karl Marx. Laws are made for the rich to against the poor. And you have spoken. Somebody said you will not know the pain of losing a child unless you are a mother. How I pray that this country elects more women. Because you know the pain of losing children. The pain of having 52 orphans just somewhere. In Solai. Some place that looks God forsaken, but is beautiful. May the truth and justice be the shield and defender of the 52 orphans of Solai, the 48 Kenyans who lost their lives, the 223 people who were rendered destitute by a man who wanted to play God and have everything to himself, including water. I must say I have not seen anything worse than this. And I hope 
that the people who we have tasked with the mandate of doing what is called regulation can do their job. Mary Senator said Nema has all of a sudden woken up from his slumber. They have gone and demolished Java and Kileleshwa, Kileleshwa petrol station, but there are people who on Awings Kodek have a flood and a river is under it. Shame on you. There's a person here, Bagadi Road, near Timor. The river passes under his beautiful building. But you did not give the person who runs a chemist in Kileleshwa even notice to remove medicine that is curing Kenyans. The land of Karl Marx, where people just oppress people for the sake of it. If the governors were to take you from this, they would go and ensure the committees we have proposed under Section 29 are put in force. If there was a committee on national environment in Narok, we would not be having the crisis in Mao today, where people have so greedy they have built their tents all the way. Crocodiles have no place to bask on riparian land. Tamai metufikisha I'm going to close by saying that I pray for one gentleman called Nurdin Haj. He was seated here, and that gentleman told us he was under pressure to charge watchmen as opposed to owners of the dam. I wonder who was putting him under that sort of pressure. We are prepared to hide the truth, but I want to tell the people who think that you can buy truth, you can buy senators, you can buy air, that you cannot hide the sun. You can't, and you will pay. You will perish. Where you go, there will be gnashing of teeth. It will be the hottest place in hell. Even your children will suffer the curses of the blood money you're keeping in your pocket. I beg to move.